everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Thunder Politics live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Kimare in Abuja. But this time next year, he just may have an idea of who will be Nigeria's next president. Because elections will have held on Saturday, the 25th, February 2023. Hanek released the schedule of activities, and between April and June this year, the political parties are expected to have conducted their primaries. In any case, the political big wigs have begun going round city to city to solicit support, especially those seeking the number one seat in the land. The PDP's presidential candidate in 2019 election, Atiku Abubaka, visited his former boss, former President Olusha Gombasanjo in Ogun State. Watch what he said after the visit. When, when are you declaring, sir? The world is waiting for your declaration. When are you declaring? Uh, we will let you know now. We will give a uh, formal announcement. Are you yeah. confident that you are going to get a ticket for your party? Have I ever failed to get the ticket? Mm. Yes. The this time around, I'm, I want to know. Maybe you are, you are so confident. Uh, I'm confident. I'm confident. Yeah. Sir, they are talking about age. That that you are uh, the elderly people should allow youth to take over. What is it? That? Let the youth compete now. It's competition. It's democracy. Interesting conversation. Of course, we will give you insights into all of that in the coming days of uh, the import of what Atiku Abubakar said in Abiy Okuta about for tonight. I'll focus in uh, a few other things that are of national importance, which, of course, uh, politically related issues and elections. A couple of major political events happened over the past days, one of which included a decision to change the date of the All Progressives Congress convention by a month. That generated a huge agitation within the ruling APC, and the ruling political association has had somewhat an intense internal wranglings over the past few days. The timetable for the general election was also released by INEC, while President Muhammad Buhari signed the electoral bill into law. The president was on the same day he signed the bill, visited Nasarawa State, and it talks about the president's favoring a former Nassau State governor for the national chairmanship position was right. Of course, well, there is one man who has come out. He was on this program, a former governor of Nassau State, a sitting senator, Tanku Al Makura. But that is not what uh, some people were talking about. They're talking about yet another one, the one who, uh, who came before Tanku Al Makura. Uh, that is being favored by the villa to be the next chairman of the APC. These are some of the internal uh, talks and, and the conversation they've been having in the APC. But, well, the man who hosted the president, who sat beside the president, who saw the former governor also, he sat on the other side of the table at the lunch and when they, uh, they had in Lafayette State Capitol. Let's speak and get some insight, perhaps. He's in the middle of all of this. He may be able to know if there's jostling and favoring of anybody that is coming from his state, he should know. I'm talking about the executive governor of Nazareth State, Governor Abdullah Isule, who joins us live from Lafayette. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, for joining us tonight. I think it's better for us to uh, start a conversation around the visit of uh, the president to your state. Perhaps that is going to be his first time um, cutting tapes for projects in your state, which I must say congratulations uh, uh, to you and your team uh, in the state for, for some of these projects that the president uh, launched. But give us a sense of uh, perhaps the most fundamental or of those projects that the president uh, um, launched on that day. Uh, for you, how much of jobs, how much of the lives of the people of Nasara State would these projects uh, make better? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sheon. I think first and foremost, let me thank you for uh, put me on the program this evening, and I want to sincerely show appreciation uh, uh, for that because it gives me an opportunity also to express a uh, uh, great appreciation to Mr. President for coming for the two day visit, you know, uh, here in Nasrawas. We had uh, both the state as well as the federal projects that were executed. But to give you an idea, is that let me start with our, our airport. You know, the former administration of Tonko al Makura actually started an airport, which was more or less a cargo airport because of the agricultural nature 
of Nasarawa State. And we also came with the idea of industrialization of the state. So the airport has really become very handy. So we had to rush and ensure that we finish the airport with very, very high tech uh, uh, instrumentation all around, you know, starting from the cabin to weather detection and everything, so that all kinds of uh, aircrafts will be able to attend. So that's the first project on landing at the airport, you know, Mr. President actually commissioned. And from there, we went to one of the ones that is very, very dear to my heart. You know, that is the Institute of Technical and Vocational Education. We have a lot of graduates here in Nasarawa State with a lot of certificates, you know, that they have, BS degree, MS degree, MA degree, BA, and the rest of that, and HND, and a lot of them, because of what they studied, it's very difficult for some of these people to get jobs. So what we decided to do is to come out actually with a technical institute so that the people can go and acquire skills in the various areas of technical and vocational education. And where did I get this idea from? If you remember, I was in Dangote when we were building the refinery in Lagos. You know, and believe me, Ashiaun, we had to go at one point and, 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 and bring into Nigeria fitters and welders and fabricators. At one time, we had close to 10,000 people, including engineers in Lagos, foreign people out of Nigeria. So I got the idea that if we can actually have this kind of skill uh, 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 institute where machining of CNC machine, that is computer numerical control machines, that is the latest technology today that we have. So we had to buy all those kind of machines, welding machines of TIG, MIG, and the rest of that also to install there. So so that way we'll be able to get some of these certified fitters and welders. It, it appears we, we lost connection with governor of uh, Nasarawa State, Tanku Al-Makura. Of course, he's speaking about some of uh, uh, the projects that President Muhammad Buhari uh, cut state on in um, uh, Governor Abdullah Surya Begipan, uh, that some of the projects he launched in uh, a few days ago on his uh, two-day visit to the state. And he mentioned the, uh, the, the airport project, the cargo airport project, and the skill acquisition center which the president launched, and a few other issues that we're going to be taking the, uh, the governor on tonight uh, in relation to the internal affairs of the APC, uh, the issue of the, the chairmanship seat of the APC, whether or not there is a favorite, uh, favorite candidate of President Buhari for that uh, seat, and also the convention and some of the internal controversies that have uh, raged on in the APC. I understand that uh, Governor Abdullah Sule is back with us. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, you, you were talking about um, how dear the, um, the skill acquisition center is for you. Yeah, actually, we, we, we did the skill acquisition center, and of course, uh, uh, also we introduced a new idea, you know, of uh, most of the parks that we have because of the security challenges that we have in the country. So we developed two uh, mega bus terminals, that uh, one here in Lafia, and the other one that we have in in, uh, in Karu local government because of all the uh, heavy traffic that we have, similar to what you see on on Third Millam Bridge, actually, we have that every day here during the weekdays, you know, in Nasarawa, mostly because of the various motor parks that we have all across. So we are concentrating them on one side, and we are also introducing a new transport company of buses of all different kinds of sizes, and the buses also are going to use uh, gas instead of um, either diesel or gasoline, you know, for them. But then the federal government projects that we have, you know, of course, he also commissioned some roads and and, uh, and the rest of that. But the biggest uh, uh, federal government projects we had is actually the substation. So you will imagine, uh, uh, Sharon, that since I came to office, you know, we have been using generator 24 hours in government house. So that's why when I had about a substation, 330 substation that were going to come up, you know, I developed special interest in that. And we went ahead and started, you know, it's being built by the Niger Delta Power Holding Company. You know, so we went into that. And then so he commissioned that as well. And today in life here, you know, we are connected to the national grid. In fact, it is a 330, 132, and 33 kV line, you know, that we are even going to start feeding Abuja now from here. You know, so these are all the kinds of uh, 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 projects, you know, that he has. Of course, he also commissioned our brand new central park. Governor. Uh, that we yeah. have here in life here. Before I get so off uh, some of the projects, 
Yeah. All right. Before I got off uh, some of these projects, which uh, I tried to allow you to uh, mention and talk about the significance, is the viability of the cargo <laughs> airport. Uh, when we look at the distance of Lafia, for example, to Abuja, and whether it is needed to have spent that kind of amount of money on constructing a, uh, an airport, the question is, what export are you going to be doing? What crop? What uh, um, local manufacturing? Or what is the initiative that that cargo airport will serve locally to Nasarawa State? Well, it will serve two purposes, uh, I share. Number one, it is actually, even though in Nasarawa, but it is the closest airport to the villa in Abuja. So it can serve as a security airport. That is number one. Two, the uh, in Namdi Aziko International Airport in Abuja is highly congested. If you remember, if you can see the local line of that is now being used for all the private airlines. So it is the international side that is being used for both domestic as well as international. So we are constructing a route, you know, that is linking uh, that airport all the way to Kefi, which is just about 25 minutes from Abuja. So it can be used as an altern alternative airport, you know, actually to Abuja. That is true. Now, coming back to the original reason why it was built, as you know, you know, we have huge uh, agricultural uh, 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 farms here in Nasarawa State. Number one, you know, the, the biggest olam farms for rice, you know, most of the rice that you saw, you know, for the uh, for the pyramid they have in, 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 in Abuja, you will imagine where that rice came from. So olam has his biggest rice mill right here in uh, in, uh, in Doma, which is next to life here. Angote has his biggest sugar plantation nationwide here in, uh, in, in Nasarawa State, which is also here in our uh, local government. Flour mills is also going to have its own, and then Azuman is having its. Now, just yesterday, I met with Olam. They are also constructing another uh, factory, you know, which is going to be, according to them, the biggest for producing animal feeds, you know, that they are having. So we have more and more of these projects coming in. But this airport can be used not just for cargo. It can be actually a security airport for Abuja. It can be used as an alternative airport to Nandi Aziko airport, uh, uh, airport in Abuja. It can also be used for commercial flights because we don't have, Benue State doesn't have a commercial airport. Taraba doesn't have one, you know, commercial airport where there is uh, uh, major activities. So uh, the one here can be used, you know, here in Nasarawa and we'll be able to connect in most of those places. So that's the reason why. So we're looking at all the options, you know, not necessarily just for cargo. All right, interesting, uh, and hopefully uh, some of these things will materialize in more money for the people of Nasarawa State, and we'll see how that pans out. I wish you the very best in those areas, Governor uh, Sule. Let's go into some politics now. I know you are the number one fan and campaigner for uh, your predecessor, uh, former Governor Tankwal Makura. Uh, but it does look like what I'm hearing is a bit different now. I inside of the APC, we are understanding that the, the former governor of the uh, was is now being um, favoured by the villa. Uh, both of them were there. What happened? Why that switch? Is the president favouring? Uh, 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 can you clarify what's happening exactly to us? Well, Sheun, there is absolutely no switch at all. In politics, you have that. Uh, both of them actually were seeking for this position, but for us in the state, the first person to come out and start seeking for the position was my predecessor. And naturally, for me as a person, I should be able to support Tanko Almakura because Tanko Almakura had come out very strongly to support me when I was running for this office where I happen to be here today. So naturally, it will seem to show you know, that I'm not an, uh, an ingrate. I must also return that kind of favor to Tanko Almakura. So I supported him, and I continue to support him. Not necessary, but when you enter politics, you know, a lot of things will happen. In fact, we went to the extent of having the stakeholders, the party stakeholders, including elected officials, as well as the party, and major stakeholders in the party endorsing Tanko Almakura. But you see, it is not only Nasarawa State that will select a national chairman. 
So we have 36 states in the federation. So if other states, and in fact, like you mentioned, the PILA and the rest of the other stakeholders come together to select Abdul Adam. Abdul Adam is also somebody we highly respect. You know, he's a very experienced politician. He has been in politics when some of us were still in secondary school. He was a state chairman of the MPN when I was still in secondary school. He's somebody that I'm always with, somebody I have utmost amount of respect for, you know, and, um, and, and somebody who is very, very experienced in this. So we don't have anything against uh, Abdullah. It's just that when you have two people, you know, as a human being, you must take a position. And somebody like me, I can't be hiding my position. I have to show it. So that's the reason why I have showed that I support Tom Makura. But if it turns out that uh, our leaders and the party have decided on Abdullah, believe me, both Tom Makura and I will respect that. And we will also support Abdullah Adam to emerge. And I think that's, that's really the, the response we have. Governor were you able to discuss this with President Buhari? You had him one-on-one. -on -one. He was your guest. You were the host. You had him in uh, Lafia for two days. Well, you so, know, we uh, had a meeting That may be with some the priority president. for you. Were you able to have that conversation with the president and why he's choosing uh, former Governor uh, Aliyu? Yes, you know, you know, all the governors actually had a meeting with uh, Mr. President last uh, uh, last Tuesday, and um, and during the meeting, Mr. President clearly informed us that uh, uh, he was, uh, as far as he's concerned, he will wish that somebody from the uh, the North Central, you know, is selected. And then, since he mentioned that there had been a lot of rumors that came up. But you know, it's not in my position to go and start asking him, you know, who is the person, this and that, because we have line of communication with Mr. President. And I and I saw also in the news today that somebody from the villa had come out to say Mr. President had not yet made a decision. But when he was here in Nasarawa, I was focusing more on development that will be coming to Nasarawa, especially that we are going to have a meeting of the APC governors on Tuesday, where some of these things will be clear. So I didn't want to take so much time and distract Mr. President from the developmental strides that we are making and the future of the state and start discussing about the politics, because I didn't know how that discussion would go. So believe me, I didn't discuss it with him. So uh, you are caught in between now. Uh, if you were to choose, uh, let's assume that uh, I'm the president now, and I'm asking you, uh, Governor Sule, it's up to you to decide. I want a national chairman from Nasara State. Choose between Tanku Amakura and his predecessor. Who would you choose? No, but you know, I told you that one actually is even an aftermath. As a state, we had already uh, 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 the stakeholders at the meeting where I was present. You know, the, state, the stakeholders came together and endorsed Tempo Almakura. And the reason is simple. You know, they, they chose Tempo Almakura because Tempo Almakura was the first to come out before Abdullah Adam. As you know, so Abdullah Adam was not actually so keen and so interested in this. Tempo Almakura has been, you know, he has been all over the place. He has been campaigning. He has been doing that. But Abdullah Adam was not. So naturally, uh, uh, most of the party stakeholders came together and say, let us go ahead and endorse Tempo Almakura so that the nation could also support him. So that's the idea. But as I said, you know, the selection of national chairman is beyond just Nasarawa state, you know. Uh, if majority of the states, in fact, is beyond even 10, 15 states, you know, so if majority of the states nationwide say is Abdullah Adamu, somebody we respect, somebody we love, somebody we admire, somebody we also strongly believe that he has the capacity to do, believe me, even my, my own uh, selection, that is Tanku al Makura, he will, he will abide by it. So it's not just me. All right. So let me ask you then, as a party internally, uh, maybe by a way of uh, intention or thinking or body language, decided on where the presidency will be zoned, because uh, it's by convention, political parties here in Nigeria, which your party has also abided by over the years, wherever the national chairman of the party comes from, the opposite angle is where uh, the presidential candidate comes from. Has your party decided on the zone where the presidency will come from? For example, southeast or southwest or southwest? No, I, I don't think the party has gone to that stage yet. What we are trying to do is to take one step at a time. You know, um, and like, like you mentioned, you know, the, the convention, the, the natural, the tradition, you know, usually is that when chairman comes from this side, the president will come from the other side. But I think you are seeing what the PDP is going through at the moment. You know, they are going through, uh, just yesterday I was told that my, my, big, my, my big boss, you know, Atiku Abubakar has clearly said he was going to pick the ticket. 
when the chairman is from Benue State. You know, so you can you can see it going back and forth. So I think uh, 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 we may see things differently this time around. Uh, if you ask me personally, I've always given you my own views as a person, but uh, just like with the national chairman, I may want something and then the party may decide on something else. You know, so the truth that the, of the matter, and as a party man, I will be loyal to it, I will follow it. You know, but the truth is that I've always said, you know, there are qualified people who are who have the capacity to lead this nation from every state of the federation. So all you have to do as a party is give the people the chance and say produce, and they will produce somebody. You know, so but it is up to the leaders of this party to be fair, and and I believe in fairness. You know, and I believe very strongly that all this distribution of uh, uh, powers, rotation of powers, this and that, bring about peace and tranquility. For me, as a governor, all I want is peace. You know, once I have peace, I will be able to make all the achievements that I have had. And the president came and was very excited about it is because we have peace in Nassau State. You know, if we didn't have peace in Nassau State, it would have been very difficult to achieve what we have achieved because we don't have the, the money. Somebody may argue that, yes, they are, they are achieving a lot in some states where there is no peace. But look at the sources of the revenue of those states. You know, most of those achievements are developments that are being made by people who feel you know, oh, well, sorry, this thing has happened to you. This is that. You know, we want to get up and be able to do something. And peace on, on its own, really, is what every, so the, every government nation... So like, let, let me, let me ask so you, that, since you mentioned fairness, in your own view, what is fairness in terms of the rotation of power? For 2023, what is, what is uh, uh, the underlying uh, statement of fairness? What would be fair? No, you know, I, I, I have told you this over and over... Uh, I will not be afraid at this stage of my life, you know, to be mixing words without me going straight to the point. I have been straight to the point many times that it's fairness that has brought me in. Otherwise, I come from the minority zone, that if the majority zones decide they are not going to have rotational governorship, then they probably I will never have been a governor. Because I come from a zone that we are very, very, in fact, the total number of voters in the three local governments from that zone is not even up to the total number of votes in life here, local government alone. That's the zone I come from. So how can I come from there out of fairness and rotation and now come and say I'm against rotation? So I have never mixed my words. You know, I've always said that fairness will have been to rotate the presidency, you know, to the south. You know, this I have never mixed my words about it. You know, and, and that's why I keep saying in every state you, 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 you go to, out of these 36 states and the federal capital, you will always find a competent person. You'll always find somebody who believes in Nigeria, who can actually develop Nigeria. So the question is not about, you know, whether you can have a competent person. So here in, in, in APC, we have seen what the president has done. You know, believe me, even with the area of the economy that a lot of people are making mistakes, I was discussing during my speech and telling the president that even on the economy, we have made landmarks. Just today, they are they, I saw in the news on the same channels, you know, how many blending plants for fertilizer that were there in 2015 when the president came in five. Today you have 41 in the nation. How many dams were there? Today you have over 50 of them. How many, you know, so there's so many things. When you took a look at about the economy, the pyramids you see of rice that we have in agriculture, we didn't have that, you know? And yeah, we, we had that some 50 years ago in Kano. We never had that. All that rice is locally, no imported rice among that rice. You know, so I think when the economy things are moving, look at the capital market. What is happening in the capital market? The total, you know, capital index in the market in 2015 was just about 11 trillion. Today is over 25 trillion. So what are we talking about? We have companies today in Nigeria making PBT of over 300 billion naira. And what, where is that money going? They have a payout ratio of over 70%. 70%. They are returning that money to the shareholders. So the economy depending on who you talk to and where you are talking about. You know, these are, these are the issues because that's the one area that they continue to... Let, let, me, let me again pick this uh, and, uh, and I say, let get, me, get your view yeah. on this. Yeah. So if, for example, uh, and you know, uh, the northern state, 19 Sorry. over the southern state of 17, and uh, if you take the, the top 10 
states in terms of voting population, out of the 10, you take at least five or six, that six in the least coming from the northern region of the country. I mean, obviously, there are more voting population in the northern region of the country. Where the north goes, uh, there, there, uh, there, there the votes goes at, at, at our elections. It's an obvious fact. Now, the question is, uh, if um, your party, for example, goes south for the presidency, and the PD, for example, goes north. How tricky would that be for your party? It wouldn't be any tricky. And uh, 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 if, you, if you look at it, in, in 2003, our presidential candidate in PDP was from the south. The uh, uh, opposition was from the north. Coincidentally, it happens to be the same Muhammad Buhari, who turned out to be the president, a southern president. You know, so it all depends on what the leaders get together to decide. You know, if they decide this is the direction is going, believe me, it will go in that direction. You know, so that's why I say it depends on the leader. So it's not necessarily because if the PDP produces a northern candidate and then the APC produces a southern candidate, it depends on the candidate and it depends on the leaders. It depends on our commitment on how much work we are going to do. And if we are not going to play anti-party, you know, if we say that it is going to be right, whoever we produce, that's the candidate we stand for. You know, that candidate is going to come out. That's the truth. So, uh, as, it, as it is right now, uh, the convention will determine a whole lot for your party. Now, the Electoral Act, has been, the Electoral Bill has been signed into law, uh, which, of course, uh, consensus is also one of the adopted mode of primaries that your party, uh, that uh, the, the, the president signed and the National Assembly approved. So, going into mm -hmm. that convention, consensus will be very critical, isn't it? And how fundamental would that be? How easy will, your, will it be for your party to arrive at consensus going into the election? Would it require the president stepping into the arena in this case? No, I think as far as the, the convention is concerned, uh, most likely we're going to come out with consensus uh, 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 candidates, you know, so that's how the election is going to be carried out by consensus. So if we decide before going to the to the convention that this is the direction that things are going to be, most likely, um, even Mr. President, I believe, will be willing to sit down with the aspirant and say, you know what, let's go consensus. That way, we won't have a problem. This and that, and I think Mr. President even made an appeal that as far as this convention is concerned, because all the other uh, uh, chairmen that we have had in the past. You know, actually came out by consensus. None of them went through any election. You know, so, uh, uh, and I think that's the reason why we are going to uh, uh, to work on it. But, and then it will go like that also into the, the uh, presidential election, I believe, you know, uh, hopefully. You know, so when, when, we, when we get to that selecting who is going to be our president, most likely it will be done also by consensus, hopefully. You know, and at the end of the day, if we can do that, that's fine. If we are not able to do that, we'll do uh, uh, indirect, you know, are uh, uh, most likely. And that's why you see some of us were we are concerned about the idea of the Electoral uh, Act, you know, boxing us into saying that it has to be uh, uh, only, you know, uh, uh, one line, you know, either direct or nothing else. You know, so that's the reason why we, we showed that. I'm happy and I congratulate the uh, National Assembly actually for, for changing their mind on that to, to now have the various options, you know, because it depends on the situation. You know, there are situations where any of the three will be the best uh, for, for that particular situation. So you, you said that the, the governors will have a meeting on Tuesday. Uh, what are we expected to, uh, to see come out of that meeting? Well, we're hoping that we can come out with clearer uh, uh, positions, I believe. I'm not uh, uh, the chairman of the PGA, the governor of KB is. And then I'm not also the chairman, <laughs> chairman of the caretaker committee, the governor of your base. You know, but I, I believe, you know, I, I was only invited to the meeting just like any other governor. So I, I believe when we go to the meeting, uh, based on the agenda that we see, a lot of discussions will be a little bit clearer. Um, uh, a lot of negotiations will be done. Uh, whoever will be the national chairman, the secretary about the zoning of the various offices will be carried out. Um, about whether we are now going to have, you know, a, a zonal congresses or we are just going to put together the national uh, congress at the convention together with the zonal congresses as it has been done in the past. You know, so I believe those are the kinds of things that will be discussed and, and, and clarified. 
you've uh, seen the election schedule. How does that come to you as a governor? I mean, the election is upon us already, because in, in the next two months, the party also should be thinking of getting a presidential candidate. How does that come to you, though? Well, it comes with excitement. That's democracy working. You know, so I, I think it's, it's very exciting, you know, that our democracy is working gradually. Uh, the president signed the law on Friday, soon after he left Nasara. In fact, we took him, uh, Nasara just bid goodbye to him. And then on arrival in Abuja, he went ahead and signed the electoral uh, uh, act, you know. So, and, 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 and so as far as I'm concerned, you know, the INEC now came out in order to meet up with the deadline of one year before the election. Now they submitted the, the timetable, you know, and the timetable is, is very clear. I don't see a, any problem with it from our own side. We're happy with what what we're seeing. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Abdullah Sule, for talking to us. Governor of Nasara said, thank you indeed for your time tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, so, sorry about all the, 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 the network issues. You know, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know. I know it could be frustrating sometimes, but we understand. Thank you so much. We we'll take a break, everyone. And when we return, the election calendar and the electoral act 2022 get our attention. Mr. Festus Okoye, National Commissioner with uh, INEC, will be speaking to us. And the thinking of INEC for this election and the schedule that has been released was GD Ojo, a political analyst. Both of them will be analyzing and breaking these issues down for us. Don't go anywhere, everyone. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. It's time for us to talk about election and the logistics of it, all the details that uh, this uh, 2023 election brings with it. We have a brand new election law, the Electoral Act 2022, an instrument that should help and prosecute the general election effectively. Although the president has a reservation, take a listen to what the president said. He's hoping that uh, when he goes back to the National Assembly, the uh, section 84, I'm not sure that is even correct, but this is, this is where his reservations. Take a listen. Hence, it will be stretching things beyond the constitutional limit to import extraneous restriction into the constitution on account of practical application of section 84, subsection 12 of the bill where political parties, conventions, and congresses were to hold earlier than 30 days to the election. Arising from the foregoing, with particular regards to the benefits of the bill, industry, time, resources, and energy committed in its passage, I hereby assent to the bill and request the National Assembly to consider immediate amendments that will bring the bill in tune with constitutionality by way of deleting section 84, subsection 12, accordingly. Section 84, subsection 12, according to the president. I've been speaking with a few lawyers and those, some of the drafters about that section and what it means, whether or not it's ultra-vers, or not it's against the Constitution. These are major issues. Some are of the opinion that let's take it in, let's have a debate and see whether or not this is, there is a problem as envisaged by the president, because that's another issue for another day. Well, INEC, after signing of the bill into law by President Muhammad Buhari, swung into action and reviewed the date for the 2023 general elections. Now, uh, the provisions upon which INEC will act on the date is now totally different according to the new law. Now, 25th February is a new date for presidential and national assembly elections, while two weeks later, Governorship elections will hold across the country. That will be on the 11th of March, 2023. Take a listen to INEC chairman on the new dates and what INEC has in plan. Of course, the whistle has now been blown. The 2023 general election was scheduled to commence on 18th February, 2023, with the presidential and national assembly elections followed by the governorship and state houses of assembly elections on the 4th of March, 
2023. However, the Commission could not release the detailed timetable and schedule of activities for the general election as it normally would because of the pending enactment of the Electoral Act 2022. The bill has not been signed into law. Therefore, the Electoral Act 2022, together with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, form the legal basis for conducting all elections in Nigeria. In particular, the Electoral Act provides strict timelines for the implementation of electoral activities based on the date of the general election. One of the significant timelines is the publication of notice of election not later than 360 days before the day appointed for holding an election, which has now lapsed for the 2023 general election. Consequently, the Commission has decided to adjust the dates for the 2023 general election to ensure compliance with the provisions of the new law. Accordingly, the presidential and national assembly elections will now hold on Saturday, 25th February, 2023, while the governorship and state houses of assembly elections will hold two weeks later on Saturday, 11th March, 2023. You've heard the INA chairman. Let's get right into it, everyone. So we have a lawyer and a member of the INEC Commission, the National Commission in Charge of Voter Education and Publicity, Mr. Festus Okoye, who joins us from Calabar. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Okoye, for joining us tonight. And I'm also congratulations to you because uh, this new law will now help you get funds right on time, well on time before the election that we get into. Mr. Gidi Ojo is a political analyst. He's also here with us in Abuja today. Thank you so much, Mr. Ojo, for, for joining us. What makes you happy the, the, the most in this new law, Mr. Okoye? Give us a sense of uh, how happy you are with this new law. Because I know funding will no longer be a problem. Uh, the kind of logistics problem we've seen in 2019, 2015, and 2011 on the day of election may not hap happen any longer if this law is, uh, uh, is strictly adhered to. But other than that, what are the other areas that makes you very happy? Well, the, the law is quite progressive. The law is not all about funding. You can have all the funds in the world and still not conduct a very good election. Uh, I believe that uh, the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission has made it very clear uh, that this law will give us added impetus and added ammunition uh, to prosecute the 2023 uh, general election. There, there are some fundamentals in the law uh, which we no doubt improve the regime of elections in Nigeria. For instance, in terms of the conduct of pre-election matters, the new law has removed the adjudication of pre-election matters away from the high courts and the high court of the federal uh, capital territory and domiciled it exclusively with the federal high court. And this will make for some level of certainty and will also prevent a situation where uh, uh, aspirants and candidates will run to courts that do not have both geographical and substantive jurisdiction uh, to go and uh, uh, fight their matters. And so, so that is one. And secondly, if you look at the law, it has also given the commission the leeway uh, to make a determination on the best way uh, to conduct um, um, uh, um, uh, 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 returns in relation to declarations and return. Previously, if you look at the law, the moment a returning officer makes a return, only a court of law has the right uh, to set aside that particular return that has been made. But in this new law, the commission has been given the power and the right and the authority uh, to review decisions and determinations made by a returning officer within a period of seven days, especially if the commission believes that that particular return was made under the risk or was not made in accordance with the dictates of the Electoral Act and also with the dictates of the Constitution. I also believe that one of the critical issues uh, that has been addressed by the law relates to the issue of the determination of what constitutes overvoting and what will be used in the determination of overvoting. Previously, 
we use the voters register, the number of voters in the voters register for the determination of overvoting. But now, what will be used for the determination of overvoting relates to the number of accredited voters. And so that is also quite progressive. Mm -hmm. And then we, we've uh, had situations where the commission has not been given the power and the authority to collect results both manually and electronically. And this will obviate the challenges we have with the issues around the transportation of results from the pooling units to the first level of collation. So I think that there are so many uh, progressive uh, aspects of this particular um, uh, act uh, that um, we aid the commission in the conduct of a very good election. And I see that uh, already INEC has started implementing aspect of the law, especially in terms of notices and actions that should follow uh, or before uh, the election date. Uh, how significant is this election also reflecting on the 2023 election plans? Well, uh, fr from the actions of the commission, you can see that this, co this commission is prepared, that this commission plans and plans strategically. The president signed this particular bill on Friday, the 25th. On Saturday, uh, the 26th, the commission met as an, at, 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 uh, uh, in, a, in an extraordinary meeting and released the timetable and schedule of activities for the conduct of the 2023 election the same day, and also fixed the date uh, for the issuance of um, uh, for the release of the uh, of, of um, uh, uh, issuance of the notice of the election, which will be released tomorrow in all INEC um, uh, state, state offices. So in relation to preparations, this particular commission is preparing and we are preparing ahead. We are not just sitting down and anticipating. We are also sitting down and planning and planning well. So in relation to some of our activities, we are already ahead in some of these activities. We knew that the Electoral Act uh, 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 was pending with the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We were also aware that whether the President signs it or doesn't long sign it, that the 2023 elections was definitely going to take place. And that since it's going to take place, the commission must begin its preparations in earnest, especially in terms of procurement activities, especially in terms of getting ready for the challenges of uh, party primaries and party nomination uh, processes and procedures. And so we are preparing and preparing well, and we are not looking, and we are not um, uh, looking back. In fact, as far as the commission is concerned, uh, so the election is today. Wow, interesting. Before I come to Mr. Ojo to get his opinion on some of these issues, first and foremost, what do you think in your mind, and I'm asking uh, you this question because also you're a lawyer, not only that uh, you work with INEC. Um, in t uh, if you compare 2019 election and 2023 election, considering the instrumentality of law that you are, you are going to use to prosecute the 2023 election and the one you used in prosecuting uh, the 2019 election. How significantly different would those two elections be? What it will be the fundamental difference in terms of a change in conduct of election? Well, uh, you know, I really, I don't, I don't see tomorrow, but I, I, I know uh, that based on the new law that has been signed, that a lot of things are going to change, that the commission will do a lot of things differently. For, for instance, if you look at the new law, you will see that political parties are now obligated to submit the list and personal party was of their nominated candidates 180 days before the conduct of election. The implication is that there's a possibility that most pre-election matters will be, uh, will be fired, uh, uh, had, and decided uh, even before the elections, so that the Nigerian people will know who their nominated candidates are even before going into that election. Se secondly, I think that it is now very, very clear to political parties and, and candidates that Technology has been firmly and fundamentally inputted into the electoral matrix of the, of the country. And that with the use of technology, the issue of human interference in so many aspects of the electoral process will be completely obviated. So we are looking forward to a very, very good election, an election that is backed up by a very, very progressive law and an election uh, that, will be heavily, uh, that will be based heavily on technology. All right, let me ask Mr. Judy Ojo. Uh, you heard what uh, Ms. Okoye has explained uh, in relation to their plans, the reasons behind 
the review of the calendar of 2023 election because they projected uh, almost two years ago that when the election will happen in 2023, a lot of people came out at the time to say, uh, what, wait a minute, what was INEC, in fact, they projected to the elections uh, 2050. So uh, from your own point of view, the electoral law that is now in place, how significant is that law? And uh, from what INEC has done, what are your thoughts? Very significant law, very, very significant. Uh, I've had the opportunity of perusing, uh, well, the purported the one that was rewarded. Final final copy. Yeah. But you never can tell what, which one is actually the final copy. But be that as it may, I saw a very, like, um, uh, you know, um, Festus Okoye Esquire said, a very progressive law, like the president himself said, a revolutionary law. And let me place on record the appreciation of civil society organization to your station, uh, you know, channels television and other media stations who partner with civil society to make Friday to be. Because um, with that, you know, there is a saying that eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. When in July last year, it seems like um, there was, you know, a push and pull between the Senate and House of Reps over the issue of transition of uh, election results, yeah. uh, you know, provision. We have one Senate was saying you go, have to go get uh, approval from NCC, and uh, House of Reps said, well, let's leave it to the discretion of uh, House of Reps. You know, it, the civil society and the media were on, on the neck of Senate to make it uh, recommit that bill and agree with the, uh, the, the House of Reps. And when you look at all the brouhaha that surrounded and all the uh, issue around direct, indirect, primary consensus and all of that, the good thing is that I heaved a sigh of relief on Friday when the president appended the signature. Because I've gone through uh, a version and I look, look at the inclusion of persons with disability. Mm -hmm. Very, very instrumental. It says in Section 9 that INEC now, in compiling the register of voters, must also take cognizance and have provision for persons with disability to talk about, uh, to uh, identify their types of disability and have it disaggregated, which means that there will be plans for them in integrating mm -hmm. them and ensuring inclusive election. Then the section 54, previously section 65 of the 2010 electoral, which says the, the INEC may provide brave ballot and uh, assistive devices. Well, now it says shall. No, shall, which, which makes it mandatory. That is inclusive election that mm -hmm. we are looking at mm -hmm. in 2023. Look at the issue of reviewing results that are made under the rest because it has gotten to a level that politicians, desperate politicians, are now shopping for returning officers. Mm -hmm. Knowing full well that whatever result they, they declare can only be reversed by the court. Uh, but now... It has given discretion to INEC to determine to, 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 what to is review, due Which is like a video-assisted uh, referee yeah. in football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the, the human error interference has been reduced to barrier's minimum. Now, INEC is on sure footing on the five pillars of election. First, compilation of voters' register. It has agreed with it that it should be biometric, electronic, and manner. Two, authentication. Issues around, you know, accreditation of voters. It has also agreed, mentioning expressly smart carrier or any other technological devices. Three, balloting. In section 41, I think it's 41 or 47, yeah. it's talking about electronic voting machine. Yeah. So there is no doubt, there is no, there is no, uh, you if, know, if were, If INEC were a secondary school child, INEC has been given exercise book, pen, pen, eraser, pencil, uh, everything cleaner, that it needs to and work, ruler, and, 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 to go for the final and, exam. And, and look, for, <laughs> look at section three, subsection three. Yeah. We talks about funding. Mm -hmm. He said INEC shall have its fund for the election. 360 days, days. ahead of yeah. election. So, so issues that happened in 2019. 2015, 2011. Exactly. On the date of election, on, election dates were No, no, no. I'm that. even referring to 2019 experience. Because logistics. You recall, you recall that the president sent the supplementary appropriation bill 
for the 242 billion that was appropriated for 2019 election in June of 2018. And by the time the National Assembly went on their annual vacation for three months in July of 2019, they just sent it to the appropriation committee to work on. By the time they came back in September, I think September or October, they were now looking for where do you get this money to give to INEC? Is it from constituency budget? Is it from the MDAs? And that dragged on till yeah. November. And it became a major problem. Because, and because and exactly. The so INEC, INEC, a INEC major had problem. a major problem. The printing of, so at some point, the, the monies were not even released for 2019 election to even print, and they print outside of the country. Exactly. Most of these uh, and, materials. And, and let, let me also tell so you. So those will not come. Le, no, no, uh, we, we, we not don't have to say that to come. But let me also highlight something I saw, which is very significant. The issue of uh, I, I was lawfully nominated or lawfully excluded mm -hmm. has also been dealt with. It says, the law says, 20, you have. 20 days to election, mm -hmm. the samples of the ballot, you will be invited as a political party to come and look, look at it and check your logo, the name of your party. You have two days within which to raise objections. If you fail to raise those objections, INEC will take it that you have already volunteered mm -hmm. that the information right. is appropriate. I, I and think, why I think where I want us to anchor. Uh, the issue of the mode of primary, I think, is an issue that we have dealt with uh, over the... But let me ask, Mr. because the electronic uh, mode that uh, the law brought to fall, that INEC can effectively use electronic, because uh, yesterday, uh, the BIVA still gave some problem in some of the four states where you conducted by election. Uh, to close the program, Mr. Okoye, what is INEC doing? Because FCT, there were these issues also in the FCT election, which we saw with the beavers and the operations. Now, in, the, in some of the by-elections that were conducted yesterday, this issue still came up. What exactly is the problem, and how are you hoping to resolve this? Can you do that for us in, like, 40 seconds? Well, you know, I, I superintended the uh, election in um, Ogoja Yala Federal Constituency, and the entire media that covered that particular election gave the Independent National Electoral Commission kudos on the performance of the beavers. There were no complaints. Across all the states where we conducted the by-elections, the beavers performed optimally to the excitement of the Nigerian people. And we keep on improving on the beavers. And we're excited the, at the fact that um, uh, some of the issues that we encountered during the uh, FCT area council elections have been completely and comprehensively dealt with. And so the beavers is, um, is the machine for the future and is the machine uh, for the 2023 election. So give us a sense that in Ekiti and Oshun said you will transmit results electronically according to the guidance of the uh, new law, is it? Well, well, the law gives us the discretion uh, to make a determination on the mode of transmission of election okay. results. We will continue to upload a uh, pulling unit results into our INEC resolve in portal, and we keep on improving and then uh, introducing right. other technological devices in the electoral process. Let me allow Mr. Gideo Ojo to give us a parting shot. Electronic, electronic means of conducting this election is a good way, but what are your views on what INEC needs to uh, be doing? Urgently, I, I, in 30 I, seconds. I, I, I feel like INEC just needs to hurry slowly. There are still some teething problems. Issue of zero voter in polling units. The batching, according to Section 42 uh, of uh, Electoral 2010, INEC needs to take it upon itself to make sure that there is none of the 176,000 polling units yeah. where there will be zero voter. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we experience in the but last... they cancel some of the zero uh, polling no, units No, what I'm saying FCT. is that if, if, it is, if, if a polling unit has been established, yeah. you should, the, it is within the powers of INEC to move voters to those polling units. It should just not be there for the, the dummy's sake. They should batch all the... Red, you, you shouldn't be having a polling unit with... 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, where others will have zero or one or five yeah. or 50. Yeah. So the right. minimum threshold should be maximally 
500 voters per polling unit or less, okay. so that in the six hours that the elections are supposed to be held, you can attend to everybody before, that has gone before to... Before 2.30. Yeah, exactly. Before Thank you so much, yes. Mr. Gideo Joe, for uh, joining us tonight. Also, a sincere appreciation to Mr. Fester Sokoye for your time tonight. Thank you so much for coming. Gentlemen. It's a pleasure. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Sean Kimbale. Bye for now.